we already know that there are four seasons in india summer monsoon the season of retreating monsoon and winter a season is a particular period of a year having a specific climate the climate of each season is different except the equatorial region other regions experience a considerable difference in the climatic conditions during the year in other words different seasons occur in one year let us study why and how seasons occur now let us study the apparent movement of the sun we all know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west however the place where the sun rises keeps changing every day during the period from 21st june to 22nd december the place of sunrise moves more and more towards the south that is why this period is called dakshinayana or the southward journey of the sun from 22nd december to 21st june the place of sunrise moves more and more towards the north so this period is called uttarayana or the northward journey of the sun in fact the sun remains in the same place and it is the earth with its inclined axis that revolves around the sun that is why looking from the earth it appears that the sun is moving either to the north or the south hence such a movement of the sun is called the apparent movement of the sun as the earth moves in its orbit four special positions of its inclined axis occur two of these are called equinox positions and two are called solstice positions equinox when both the poles of the earth are in front of the sun it is called an equinox position this position occurs on 22nd march and 23rd september so these two days are called equinox days on these days the sun's rays fall perpendicular on the equator at noon it means that on the equator the sun is exactly overhead at noon observe the figure it shows the illuminate and dark parts of the equator and other latitudes made by the circle of illumination note that two parts are equal this is because the circle of illumination passes through both the poles on these two days hence day and night are of equal duration everywhere on the earth which means the day and night are of 12 hours each the equinox on 22nd march is called the vernal equinox and the equinox on 23rd september is called autumnal equinox in the northern hemisphere solstice when any one of the poles is inclined towards the sun to its maximum it is called solstice this position occurs on 21st june and 22nd december these are solstice days now we shall study about summer solstice after 22nd march or the vernal equinox as the earth moves forward in its orbit the north pole inclines more and more towards the sun as a result one by one consecutive latitudes in the northern hemisphere start receiving perpendicular rays at noon this continues up to the 21st june when the rays fall perpendicular at 23 degrees 30 minutes north latitude 
This latitude is called the Tropic of Cancer. On this day, the midday sun is exactly overhead at the Tropic of Cancer. In the Northern Hemisphere, 21st June is called Summer Solstice. It is the longest day in the Northern Hemisphere and the longest night in the Southern. Always two paths are created by the circle of illumination. Excepting those of the equator, the paths are not equal. In the Northern Hemisphere, the illuminated paths are greater than the dark paths. That is, in the Northern Hemisphere, days are longer and nights short. The entire Arctic Circle lies in the illuminated part. It means that even after the Earth completes a rotation, the Sun will still be visible in the sky. The Sun will remain visible in the sky for a period of 24 hours or more in the region from the Arctic Circle to the North Pole. At the North Pole, the Sun will continue to appear in the sky for a period of 6 months, that is, from 22nd March to 23rd September, winter solstice. After 21st June, the Earth continues its onward journey along the orbit. On 23rd September, both of its poles face the Sun again. After this equinox position, as the Earth proceeds forward, its south pole inclines more and more towards the Sun. As a result, one by one, consecutive latitudes in the Southern Hemisphere start receiving perpendicular rays at noon. This continues up to 22nd December, when the rays of the Sun fall perpendicular on 23 degrees 30 minutes south latitude. This latitude is called the Tropic of Capricorn. On this day, the midday sun is exactly overhead at the Tropic of Capricorn. It is the longest day in the southern hemisphere and the longest night in the northern. During winter solstice, the rays are perpendicular at the Tropic of Capricorn and the illuminated parts of the latitudes in the Southern Hemisphere are larger. Therefore, at this time, days are longer in the Southern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, 22nd December is known as Winter Solstice. However, at the equator, the illuminated and dark parts are equal. The equinox and solstice figures show that at the equator, day and night are of equal duration, that is, 12 hours each throughout the year. Now friends, let us study the last part of this chapter, Seasons and their Cycle. From the vernal equinox onwards, days become longer in the Northern Hemisphere. The rays of the Sun gradually become perpendicular. Also, the midday Sun reaches a greater height in the sky. As a result, the Northern Hemisphere gets more heat and temperature rises. Therefore, from 22nd March to 23rd September, it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere. During the same period, nights are longer in the Southern Hemisphere. Rays of the Sun become more slanting and so less heat is received. Therefore, it is winter season in the Southern Hemisphere from 22nd March to 23rd September. The situation is just the opposite from 23rd September to 22nd March. During this period, the days are longer in the Southern Hemisphere and so, there it is summer 
whereas it is winter in the northern hemisphere at the same time. In this way, due to the difference in the heat received, we experience summer and winter every year. Seasons in the two hemispheres occur in different periods one after the other. This is the cycle of seasons. Let us get some more information on seasons. Depending on the local conditions, different seasons besides summer and winter are recognized in different regions. For example, in India, we receive rains during a certain period of the year. Therefore, we have four seasons, summer, winter, monsoon and the period of retreating monsoon. In Europe and North America, the four seasons are summer, autumn, winter and spring. These seasons also occur in Australia only during a different period.